What's up, my friends? It is April, hallelujah. It is almost done being cold. I hope you guys are finally defrosting, dethawing, <laughs> warming up, whatever it is that you're doing. Uh, April is one of the best months to catch them. And so this is the April Bates Breakdown. If I could only pick five things, what are the best five things for this month. So we're gonna dive through some tackle, dive through some baits. If you see some weirdos wandering around back there, it's a busy day in here, we're building fixtures and stuff, so forgive the uh, the background, but if you guys wanna hang out, talk about some dope baits for April, let's do it. Welcome to the Hookup Tackle. Oh, what a oh, stud. Yeah. Look at that. That was <laughs> sick. Cheers, my friends. Happy Sunday. All right, guys, some breaking news. What's in this week at the Hook of Time? What a beautiful post on fish. Look at that. <laughs> Look at that good on that. That's a nice fish. It's cool. Welcome back, my friends. I am Ben with the Hook of Tackle, Tackle Otaku on Instagram, being joined this fine morning by my buddy CJ at Desert Bassin. CJ, what's up? What's up there, guy? Snazzy shirt you got there. Thank you very much. It's good. It is the Daiwa Steez hookup collab. There she is. Yeah, almost pulled my whole shirt off. <laughs> this video what's is spiked in views. <laughs> Boom. It's April. It's nice. Finally. Finally. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Shorts are going to be coming back out. Yep. Jackets are gone, even though you're seeing a hoodie today. It's still, I mean, I guess. <laughs> Dude, I'm actually burning up right now. <laughs> I guess we're in and out of that spring, you know, coolness. And a lot of you guys probably live in places where it's been hot for a while. Yeah. But April is one of the best months of the year because it pretty much brings an end to the winter and it starts bringing in the warmth right? Summer's right there. Spring is here. It just feels good and it feels good to the fish too. Mm -hmm. Pretty much everywhere you guys are, unless some of you suckers live in like Idaho <laughs> or North <laughs> yeah. Dakota where you guys still have ice, hey, choices. That's a big bummer. Yeah, poor for you guys, <laughs> good for the rest of us. The fish are eating, the fish are chewing, and it's a, just a really fun time of the year to catch them. So these are always fun uh, videos to do. And again, keep in mind, that I'm gonna talk about my favorite baits to throw in April. This is going to vary drastically based on what part of the country that you're in. So, you know, CJ, let's just talk through maybe my three favorite and let's bring in some of the other guys too. Yeah. Everybody's kind of working. That way we can get some opinions that aren't just mine. Yeah. Does that I sound like good? It. Let's do that. Uh, and, and we'll just pick everybody's brain on, on their favorite baits. If you could only have one or two baits, what are you doing? Uh, and we'll, hopefully we'll just give you guys a starting point if nothing else, you guys might even know what you're gonna be doing all April. We're just hanging out. I'm just so, happy to not be throwing a jerk bait anymore. Crack <laughs> a beer. You, wait, you stopped throwing a jerk bait? Oh, dude, my right arm's dragging on the ground right now. <laughs> <laughs> You've literally so been throwing a jerk bait since like December. Oh, longer than that, dude. Like maybe the fall. No, Yeah, I mean, it didn't really stop for you. No. And I feel like when I was in Japan, all I was doing was getting jerk bait <laughs> texts from you. Yeah, yeah, unfortunately. Yeah, well, then we had the new rods. Yeah, it has been a long jerk bait yeah, season. Yeah, it's been a long winter yeah. for your boy back here. So you could certainly keep throwing the jerk bait. But this is the time of year we can have some fun. So let's start diving in. Are you ready? I'm ready. Okay, so I'm gonna start with a bait that pretty much lives on my rod year round, but over the next two months, this is kind of like the key time. And most of you guys know about this bait. That's this guy. This is the Mega Bass Mag Draft. Now I'm just gonna call it, you know what? I'm gonna call it a Mega Bass Mag Draft. I was gonna say <laughs> a six inch swim bait, but Let's just call it what it is. There's something special about this bait. I brought a couple <laughs> other baits here with me too that we can talk about as maybe alternatives to this. But this is really a critical, critical time of the year for this bait. And the reason that this bait is really kind of in its prime right now is anytime the fish move up shallow to spawn all the way through the end of shad spawn, that's the key, most important time of the year to be throwing a bait like that. 
This is when you're gonna get the biggest bites. This is when you could go sack 30 or 40 pounds on a mag draft or a line through or whatever it is that you guys like to throw. This is the time of the year to do it. And the biggest reason is, look, when they move on to beds and the water is clear, you can certainly just go around and sight fish them, yep. right? But if you're trying to cover a lot of water or your water's not super clear, so you can't really see them all the time, or maybe you just don't like to bed fish. Like we don't really bed fish that nah. much, right? This is an amazing bait to cover ground. It's just a bait that you can tie on and fling and just cover ground. And you know that kind of once you work it through the area, if you didn't get bit, you just kind of keep going, Yeah. right? It's not yeah. like you got to make the same cast seven or eight or 10 or 12 times, like your fishing structure and you got to fish real slow. It's a bait, you can just put the trolling motor down and just cover a lot of ground and then you'll find little areas, you know, key little pockets where maybe there's bait or maybe it's a big area where they've moved up to spawn. And the mag draft is a bait that fishes slow enough that if those fish are actually spawning, it's a slow enough moving bait to where bed fish will eat this. But it's a realistic enough bait to where fish that are feeding on bait will eat this. Mm -hmm. So that's why this is really kind of the magical spawning time bait. I'll just open one up. We talk about this all the time. In fact, CJ and I did a mag draft video not too long ago, just a few weeks ago. Mm -hmm. I noticed <clears throat> I was listening to it back the other day, and I noticed that I forgot a key piece of information uh, in that video. So I'm going to share it here. Okay, and we can talk about this uh, at other times. But six inch mag draft, this is kind of the magical size. Of course, if you guys are fishing around uh, fish that are feeding on gizzard shad or larger prey, you can go to the eight inch. The six inch is kind of the magical. The 10 inch is really more of a specific swim bait guy size. Yeah. Like if Jeff was here, he could talk about it. Yeah. But that that's no fun to throw, <laughs> right? Like I this, like getting bit. <laughs> yeah, I like to catch fish. So this is a lot more fun. The critical piece that I was gonna mention is the mag draft. We speak about this all the time, that it has a certain sweet speed that you're supposed to fish it at. So if you go just right, you're gonna see a head wobble and a tail kick, right? So you're gonna kind of get this two-in-one motion. If you go too fast, it's gonna start going on its side and it doesn't quite have that same motion. So it's really important that you figure out the speed. What I forgot to mention in that video is that the mag draft was actually built and designed to be fished on a snap. So you'll notice that a lot of guys, if you follow anybody in Japan that throws a mag draft, most of them will be using a snap. You could use a split ring, right? So that's going to give it more pivot and it will allow you to fish it slightly faster than you can tying direct. Now, I would say probably half the time or maybe even more, I just tie direct right. because usually I'm just in a rush. Yeah. Right? I get there and it's like, oh, dude, they're going to eat this it's thing. It's finally April. <laughs> yeah, take it out of the package, tie it on, and I throw it, right? But if you are really trying to get a little bit more speed out of it without it rolling, try putting a pivot point on there. Either attaching a snap like a size 2 would be perfect, uh, or like a size 2 or 3 split ring. It'll give you a little extra pivot. It'll allow you to get a little bit more speed out of it, okay? Uh, 16 or 18 pound is what I would recommend. I usually throw it on 18. You could go to 20. Uh, so you're fishing around a lot of brush. I, I really like 20, yep. but you're going to get, you have to fish it even slower, right? So if you're looking for something, uh, kind of the ideal size, I would do 16 uh, or 18 on it. Now, what if you live in a place where they see nine gazillion mag drafts? They're well, probably going to just keep eating it. I was going to say, you just keep throwing it. Keep throwing it. Probably <laughs> just going to keep eating Free it. Free rig it. Um, but you've heard us talk about this guy. This is the owner Japan, uh, the Get Neck Cultiva. This is the Birkin Swimmer. Okay, so it's a very similar size. It's got a different swim to it, obviously, right? But it's kind of in that same category of a paddle tail and it's a rigged swim bait. It's got an amazing head wobble to it as well. This is another great one uh, that you can fish side by side the mag draft. If you're running down a bank where they've seen a bunch of mag drafts or you know maybe it's an area that you've been fishing, you fish it week after week after week and you've been catching them for two or three weeks already on uh, the mag draft and they stop eating it, you know, maybe it's time just to mix it up a little bit. Yeah. Uh, the Birkin Swimmer is a nice bait to kind of add into the mix. Again, it's got a little bit different swim, a different wobble, a different kick, uh, but they absolutely smoke it. So, you know, well, try it. 
Yeah, it's you know, dope play bait. with it. It's a really cool bait. I think you guys will catch a ton of fish on it if you try it. It's a really nice one to add. Yeah. Because it's a little bit different than this. It's not like you're adding the same bait, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Similar that they have a paddle tail, but this one's creating a draft. This one's creating more of a visual appeal. It's softer. It's got more kick. Uh, so they kind of go, they kind of complement each yeah. other. Right? When I was on that bite with the mag skip and docks. Yep. When that bite started tapering off, I noticed I was getting more bit bites on the Birkin. On the, yeah, on the Birkin. Yep. Yeah. So it just mixes it up just a little bit slightly smaller, right? And they even make a smaller size than this. Um, but you kind of get that same idea. So again, for a starting point for me, you know, a mag draft or a paddle tail like this is just a great one to just cover a lot of ground, right? I can fish it relatively fast. I'm moving the bait slow, but I'm fishing relatively fast because I can make one cast down a lane, not getting bit, I'm to the next lane, to the next lane, to the next bank, I'm to the next point, right? Mm -hmm. and I can cover a lot of ground until I figure out where they are. So for me, number one, mag draft. All right, number two, if I'm fishing an area that's full of cover, which is almost, for us, it's pretty much all the time spring. I would imagine that most of the country is probably like that. So for us, we get tons of rain and snow melt that starts coming down in the spring and all of our lakes kind of fill up and brush floods. So we get lots of wood, lots of timber, just lots of crap in the water yeah. everywhere, right? It, which makes it just super fun to throw yeah. something in a bush and swim it out. <laughs> yeah, that's basically yeah. what, it, what it is, right? So when it gets like that, when your lakes flood and it's happening at the same time, the water's warming, nature is pulling the fish up into those bushes and, and shallow. You basically just have to throw something in it and swim it out. And it could be a swim bait, it could be a spinner bait, it could be a chatter bait, it could be a crank bait. I mean, there's a million different things potentially you could do. So you have to go with your favorite, I would say, right? Whatever you have the most confidence in. So for me, I love a square bill, okay? And this time of the year, my favorite square bill is this guy. This is the Evoke. So the Evoke 1.2 or the Evoke 2.0, pretty much always tied on. These are from depths. The 1.2 is a 55 millimeter, 11 gram. The 2.0 is 66 millimeter, 18 gram, right? So basically a 3 8 ounce and like a 5 8 ounce, basically what we're looking at. The 1.2 and the 2.0 is the dive depth. So I'm pretty much always throwing this on 20 pound. So I get it a little bit shallower. So this is more like a 1.0 and it's more like a 1.6, right? So basically like three to four feet, you know, maybe like five, six feet, something like that, dive depth, okay? Now, <clears throat> the reason I love the Evoke, and by the way, I usually keep my colors super simple, white or chartreuse. Yep. So, uh, you know, I love white back shad or black back shad has been my favorite color in this just because it's pretty much all white. Yep. We've been working on a custom color which Ooh. we will drop uh, soon, so stay tuned. That's pretty dope. Uh, and then if they're not eating white, I pretty much go chartreuse. It's usually one of those. Now, you might live in a place where they smoke red or they want it gold or whatever, so obviously, you know, throw the color that works best for your water. We've talked about this bait a lot. I'm not gonna spend a ton of time on it. If you're new to the Evoke, here's what I can tell you. Our buddy Kenta designed this for depths, and he designed it <clears throat> to act and perform like a balsa crankbait. Balsa is incredibly buoyant. It has an amazing cover deflective property. And when it hits, it just kind of bounces. And the same thing is happening to this bait. It's a single chamber bait. So it's all full air in there. And when it comes through, it literally just kind of lifts up and over. And it takes those treble hooks and just lifts them up over the branch and you're moving. So what I do with this is I literally look for the nastiest, gnarliest tree, stump, wood, whatever I can find, and I throw this right into the middle, and I just wind it, and I just let it do its thing. One out of 30 or 40 casts, it might actually hang up a little bit, and usually I can just kind of finesse it out. Mm -hmm. But almost always, this thing is just kind of bouncing up through and comes right through stuff. And you're putting a bait that 99.9% .9 of the fishermen are afraid to put into the middle of stuff, right? Right. So when the fish are cold and they just move up, they wanna be right in the middle of a bush. They don't wanna chase down a lane, right? They wanna be sucked next to that cover. When they're spawning, they wanna be right there where their bed is. When they're done spawning, they wanna be right there by that <laughs> wood. Like yeah. they don't really start chasing until kind of post-spawn almost. 
-hmm. when they're really more looking for food, right? Like pre-spawn, post-spawn, they'll go and start chasing, but once they're kind of locked into that spawn mode, they really stay tight to the brush, and that's where throwing in a boat can be key because you can put it right into the tree yeah. and put it right into their face. Yeah. It's the pond guy's best friend too. I mean, Andrew and I went out and pond fished the other day, and I yep. threw an evoke around pretty much all day. Yep. And he threw a spinner bait, so just to put it in perspective. Yeah. You know, and I didn't break it off once. I right. had that one bait all day. So the same thing, you know, spinner bait you think is weedless, mm -hmm. right? You think of like, oh, that's what you want to put in cover. This has two treble hooks. You have six hook points, and you can put it in the same place. Yep. Yeah. Works so. Great. You know, for all of you guys that have been afraid to try a square bill, try this one, right? Yeah. This one will come through cover uh, unlike anything else that you have tried. Uh, for those of you that know about the Evoke, stay tuned for a very <laughs> special color drop oh, coming soon. Can't wait. Yeah, Ooh. it's been about a year in the making, but it's going to be sick. It's going to be dope. So, uh, excited to bring it to you. All right, number three for me. So we got a swim bait, we got a square bill. Pretty much anywhere I go in the country, except for probably a Great Lake, I can throw those two things and, and catch a fish. Smallmouth, largemouth, spotted bass. I can just go around and run and try to find some bass, right? Now, if they're just not chasing, or I have found, well, I've got a few bites in this little area, then I can slow down and really start picking things apart. So again, because we're shallow water focused, we're heavy cover focused, you know, we've got docks, we've got trees, we've got grass, whatever your shallow cover is. It's all about flipping for me. Oh yeah. Okay. So this is this is the time where your pitching stick, your flipping stick. I mean, I'll literally probably have three or four. I have a couple swim baits, a couple square bills, three or four flipping rods <laughs> rigged up. Right. I mean, it's it's junk fishing time of the year. I mean, you could do a gazillion different things, but this is where the flip really starts getting good for me okay and i'm going to talk about some different baits uh rigging setups what we do uh and again this is all just personal preference so it's based on experience what's getting bit for you and what you enjoy doing flipping pitching punching means different things i guess to different people so typically when we talk about flipping right we're talking about let me throw this up there just got to get that motion going. Yeah, I bet I that know. feels oh, nice. I want to catch them. <laughs> okay, so flipping typically, you're pulling the line back, right? You're lifting your bait, and then you're presenting it like that. So it's closer range. It's it's very controlled. It's very accurate. It's very quiet, right? You can kind of get in a groove, and you can really present that however you want to do it. Now, typically, this is done with a longer rod, a little bit more open, right? So if you guys are in Florida, if you guys are in you know, Alabama, a place where it's more grass, aquatic vegetation here in Arizona, would be like Colorado River stuff, then flipping is something that you can do. For the rest of the country that are fishing around trees, right? We've got lots of overgrown stuff, you're in closer quarters, then you're probably pitching more, okay? So pitching is usually when you hold it in your hand, you got a little shorter rod and you're just kind of like pitching it into that little spot right there, right? Because there's not enough room to have a big rod to kind of flip. You're just trying to, you know, skip it underneath the dock and you're pitching underneath that limb right there. Something like that, just a little closer range, at a little quicker yeah, speed, I guess, absolutely. Say, right? So when I say pitching or flipping, that's basically what I'm talking about. Rigging's the same, right? You can do the same with the same bait. Mm -hmm. This is pretty much my go-to springtime setup uh, for flipping and pitching, okay? So you need a couple of components here. You need a bobber stop, okay? That's gonna basically hold your weight in place so that whatever you have down here is all one package and it all kind of falls through uh, the cover in one unit, right, one piece. This is gonna be important because as water floods and water floods the bushes, you want the bait to kind of fall down together, right? If this separates, if you don't have a bobber stop on there and your weight's free to fall and your bait's free to fall, this could go under one log and this could go under another <laughs> log and like you set the hook and there's not really <laughs> anything there. Like it could become a mess, Yeah. right? You can snag a lot. There's nothing worse than pitching into like that perfect spot and then your bait's sitting there and you see your weight going. Yeah, under. your weight falls, your bait's <laughs> staying. You're like, okay, that's was Reel really it back. Dumb. Yeah. So you definitely need a bobber stop. Now there's a gazillion different bobber stops on the market. Um, I pretty much just live, like this is a really good one that I really like. This is the Ryugi Combo Stop. Um, you could use this. Decoy makes a great one. Old school Eagle Claw bobber stops. It doesn't matter. Uh, I just like black. 
Yeah. It's in my head. So, you know, sometimes you get those eagle claws and they're like black, red, and yellow. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. I would always use the black ones to throw the red and yellow away. Yeah. Like, it's just in my head. Right? I don't know how many no times sense. I've seen those little, like, what would you call them? Like little bobbins or whatever they're called. Yeah. And it would just be red and yellow. On yeah. There and all, and all the blacks are, are gone. Yeah. That's, that was my boat the entire time. But <laughs> you can use two of these or three of these. If you go to a big weight, you can use one for a small weight. Uh, but I really like this. I pretty much live on the large size because I flip braid most of the time. If I'm going to do fluorocarbon, then I'll usually go to the medium size. Yeah. Okay. So you can, there's a small, medium, and a large. I'll use the medium for fluoro, uh, large for braid. It's just personal preference. You can do either, but basically you just want to use a size that's going to actually kind of stop, right? So it should be relatively hard to pull that down to the weight, right? And then that actually needs to hold it in place. Okay. So that's step number one. You need a stop. Step number two is some kind of flipping weight. Uh, five eighths ounce is kind of my starting point all the time. Quarter ounce, three eighth ounce, half ounce, three quarters, whatever you like to do is fine. Usually the shallower the water, the lighter the weight, right? And the deeper the water, the heavier the weight. So sometimes you'll be fishing like a big tree that might be in 20 feet of water. Maybe the fish are at the bottom. So you might be better off taking a three quarter or one ounce to get it down there to bounce around all the branches to actually make it down. Some sure. of you guys might live in some big mats, right? Where you need a one ounce or a two ounce to actually penetrate the vegetation, right? Like Griff Fish is a place over here by the Gila where you throw oh, yeah. a two and a half ounce or yeah. a three ounce Crazy, sometimes. Dude. Like the craziest, <laughs> it's literally like a solid two foot mat. You would of, never guess there's fish underneath that. Yeah, he's ever. nuts. But he flips it through there and he gets it down and catches fish, yeah. right? But if you're looking for a place to start for me, I would say half ounce or five eighths ounce. Those are the two most usable sizes. I like five eighths because I tend to fish faster than most people. I like to get it in there, make a good accurate cast the first time, let it get down there. If I don't get bit, pull it out, fish the next bush. Like there's gazillions of bushes. Yep. So I just want to cover as much as I can. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. <clears throat> as far as brand or whatever, whatever works for you is good. So I like the arc tungsten. Um, you know, I like the rains. I like the Picasso. This is a Picasso. Yeah. It doesn't really matter to me. Um, so whatever one you like is fine. Mm -hmm. It's a flipping weight, not a worm it's a, weight. It's a flipping weight. Yeah. yeah. So, not a worm weight. I not think, a worm I weight. I think people get confused sometimes. Okay. I've seen we, guys. Let's talk about that. So the difference between a flipping weight and a worm weight, even though they're both bullet sinkers, yep. a worm weight is usually longer and thinner. And a flipping weight is usually shorter and fatter. Okay. The importance of that is usually when you're fishing a worm weight, you want the the longer the weight, the more weight there is, right? The more it's going to lay on the rock, lay on the sand, drag around, the more weight that's making contact to the bottom to feed you back input, right? But if you flip with it, there's also more weight now to snag. It's yeah. longer, so it can wedge into places more, and you're gonna find that you snag a lot more flip and close range with a worm weight. A flip and weight is usually shorter and fatter, right? So you've got kind of like this fat belly to it, and it's designed to be a shape that won't really wedge, it kind of bounces up and over stuff. So it's gonna snag a whole lot less, mm -hmm. right? now. If you guys are just getting into this, you're going to look at lead and you're going to see, oh shit, lead bullet weights for $1.99 a pack. <clears throat> and then you're going to look at tungsten and you're going to be like, holy crap, two for nine bucks or mm -hmm. eight bucks or whatever, you know, tungsten you go with. Pay the money to get the tungsten. Absolutely. Okay. So it will cost you more per weight, but you're going to hardly ever lose them. Mm -hmm. So I can tell you when you flip lead, you're going to go through a ton of weights. They're just bigger, they're longer, they're softer, they're going to snag, they're going to wedge, you're going to break more off. The yeah. tungsten are super hard and they're smaller, they're going to come through cover a lot more, you're going to hardly ever lose them. Yeah, Okay. I think if you talk to any flipping guy, it's all about being compact too. Yeah, for sure. I lose more tungsten weights in the bottom of my boat in my drain <laughs> yeah. than I do to the bottom of the lake. Unfortunately, it's yeah, so true right. here, too. I cut it off, I throw it down there, and I go, I'll tie that on later, and I don't, yeah. and my weight finds its way to the bottom of my boat somehow. Like a cup holder full yeah, of tungsten exactly. somewhere. <laughs> exactly. All right, and then behind the weight, you're going to need a hook, and you're going to need a bait, right? So in between my weight and my bait, I will sometimes put a punch skirt. 
Okay, now these are the hookup tackle punch skirts. These are hand tied in Japan, okay? Uh, these used to be branded under a different brand, right, that shall not be named. It's an amazing skirt that's a really hard plastic bead and then a hand tied silicone material. I use a punch skirt religiously when the fish need a slower fall, okay? So if the fish are super aggressive and they want it to fall really fast, then I don't use a punch skirt. I'll just go to like a three quarter ounce weight or even say at a five eighth ounce weight, something that just falls really fast and you just get it to the bottom of the tree. And that's typically when they're like feeding on shad really heavy. So like shad spawn is, I usually don't put a skirt early in the season and kind of post-spawn when the fish kind of want a little more bulk or they want a slower fall, I go with a punch skirt, okay? So punch skirt will slow it down a little bit. It'll also create more bulk. So it creates more of like a bluegill type profile, a crawdad type profile. If I take the skirt off of there, then it basically is just more of like a shad or a bait fish kind of falling down, okay? So that's kind of how I choose. No right or wrong, it's whatever they eat, but typically, I start the season in the colder water with a skirt and I fish it all the way through post spawn. And then once I see that they're actively crushing bait, I usually take the skirt off and go back to just straight bait. And then when it gets to be summer again, it's molten freaking hot <laughs> uh, and the fish kind of slow down, I go back to the skirt. Yep. Okay, so that's kind of my thing. Now, I do this versus just flipping a flipping jig because my land ratio is way better on this. Mm -hmm. Okay, so jigs have one of the worst land ratios of all things, so I don't flip a jig. Uh, that's why I stay in here. Uh, then you need a hook, right? So here, let's just tear this bait off of there. So gazillions of different hooks. Uh, you know, owner makes amazing flipping hook. Uh, a lot of you guys like the Gamagatsu flipping hook. Uh, the last season or so, I've been playing a lot with the Ryugi. This is the Ryugi uh, Tantum Control, and I've really enjoyed using this hook. So it's not a true straight shank. It's not really it's a like true a, anything. It's like a hybrid between a straight, sh a straight and an shank EWG, and an EWG. Yeah. Right. So if you guys are fishing just straight aquatic vegetation, just go with a straight shank, like the owner flipping hook or something like that, the Gamagatsu flipping hook, trocar, whatever it is that you like. But what we do out here is we flip a lot of like combination. So it might be aquatic vegetation for, you know, 15, 20 flips, and then there yeah. might be like a big lay down or wood, mm -hmm. right? Where the challenge to using a straight shank in wood is a lot of times you get it to the base of a tree and they bite and you set the hook and that straight shank will actually penetrate the fish's mouth and wedge into the wood, mm -hmm. right? So a lot of times you'll flip in there and you'll shake it and it'll go thunk. And you're like, oh, hell yeah. And you wind down and you set and you feel like you just set into a stump. <laughs> but you've actually set into a fish that's now literally pinned to the stump and it's stuck there. So a lot of times when we're fishing wood, we'll go to an EWG style. The tantrum control kind of lets me bridge the gap. It's kind of in the middle. Here's the tantrum control. So it comes in a three out, four out, five out. I live in three out and four out pretty much. Uh, I'll go to five out if I'm flipping something really big, but I hardly ever do, right? So it comes like this. There's no barb or anything on it. It's kind of that hybrid, like CJ said, straight shank and EWG. I usually just tie my double Palomar, so I don't even need to snow it, but you could certainly snow it if you wanted to snow it. And you're gonna need a keeper. So the TC keeper, and then it's basically just shrink tube and you hit it with your lighter and you can put your barbed keeper wherever you want it. Okay, so I pretty much just rig it like that. Let me get that out of the way. All right, that makes sense? Yeah, I like that. Yeah, so that slides over the hook, mm -hmm. you hit it with a lighter and then you've got your keeper. Now, as far as baits go, I keep this relatively simple, okay? My starting point almost always is that guy, Reaction Innovation Sweet Beaver, okay? So this is just a bait that comes through cover very easily. It just kind of has a falling type of motion, doesn't have a lot of life to it. It just moves through. There's nothing really scary about it. A gazillion different colors. It's yeah. an amazing bait. It's durable. It's been on the market for ages. Not that expensive. So this is kind of my go-to color, Juicy. Yeah. Uh, it's kind of a color. watermelon candy red flake. It's got everything you need in one bait. So I keep it very, very simple. Now, there are times when you get to a certain body of water and it has to be this flake or has to be this color. So 
may adjust when that happens. But if you're looking to get started, these are the three colors that I basically live in. Juicy for almost always. First thing in the morning, Dirty Sanchez, which is basically just green pumpkin chartreuse. So Dirty Sanchez and Reaction Ovations are green pumpkin chartreuse and whoever else's color, right? And if it's just super disgusting water, a black blue. Yeah. Pretty much that. That's it. Okay. Now, this is basically my starting point until post-spawn. When it gets to post-spawn, then I want something that's got some life in it. So then I'll switch to the man bear pig, a brush hog, something that's got more like curls to it moving, right? That's pretty much where I live. Now, there are some exceptions to that. Sometimes I know they're feeding heavy on craws, so they won't eat a beaver. Uh, so the five inch doe live craw is a great one. So this one flips very, very well. All right, so it's got some big appendages to it. Don't be afraid. It, I know it says five inch, but just to give you a comparison, if I'm fishing around fish that are feeding on bluegills a lot, I flip this guy, which is the bull flat 3.8 inch. This is an amazing flip bait that nobody uses, okay? Especially with the punch skirt. If you compare the 3.8 bull flat to the five inch doe live crawl, they're kind of the same size. Yeah, they're not, it's not a crazy difference. It's not a big difference. So a lot of people go, oh, five inch, that's huge, but not in this. Mm -hmm. I think it's five inches from the very tip to the very tip of the appendage. Right. But that body is only like three inches long. Yeah, maybe three inches. Right, yeah. maybe three inches. So uh, again, a lot of people are probably surprised to hear that the bull flat is a flip bait, but if you guys are fishing for fish that are feeding on bluegills, tilapia, perch you know anything like that dude this is an amazing flip bait no okay? it's a no-brainer yeah uh, so it's just compact it doesn't have a lot of you know crazy scary movement to it but especially when you put that skirt in front of it you just have this beautiful bulky bluegill falling down through the cover it just it looks incredible it's super subtle okay so that would be a great one to add uh depending on regionally where you guys are the other one that's amazing that hardly anybody uses, but it's kind of one that we figured out a couple years ago on accident just because we ran out of baits. <laughs> but it turns out that it's an amazing one uh, when the fish are keyed in on bait. And that's this. This is the OSP Dole Life Stick Fat. Yep. Okay. Now, again, if everybody around you is throwing a brush hog or throwing a beaver and you're trying to throw something just a little bit different, the Dole Life Stick Fat is an amazing alternative that basically, you can see that it fits perfect behind that skirt, right? And it gives just that one little movement back there, okay? So you've got a little more life than a beaver, but you don't have like tentacles and flappy craws and it's not crazy. It's still really subtle. It comes through cover very easily. And when you shake it, you get just that little bit of tail movement on the end back there. It's just, it's all around a great one. Okay. So there you go. For me, I can pretty much take these three things, the flip, the swim bait, the square bill, uh, pretty much anywhere in April and catch them. But let me, let me grab the guys and yeah. really quickly, let's just put them on the spot and give them <laughs> a bait. Who's I'm interested to see what they have. Let's to see who I can find. Pull out of their ass here. Yeah. Hey, Callan, how are you doing today? Good. You look great. Thanks, CJ. Nice sweatshirt, by the way. I'm also wearing a sweatshirt in April. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> technically, Ben's got a hoodie weird. on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, technically, I do have a hoodie on. You're right. All right, doggy. What do we got? All right, so to start off, I'm going to start with a bait I love to throw in April, and that is the 8 inch sock mata from Depths. And this is a super fun bait to fish. And I know it's a little big. I really don't think that affects how many bites you get with this bait too much. Because the way I'm fishing, it's really reaction focus. Because the fish are starting to push up into that shallower water and in sticks and stuff. And I love rigging this weedless and just burning it almost as fast as I can and just killing it. And the action this thing gives off in the tail section is crazy how it kicks. It's so erratic and realistic to how a real fish looks when they're darting because like a paddle tail will kick hard but it's not that same like erratic little like flick of the tail that right. this thing gets and it's just a really fun bait to throw and they just smoke it it's kind of how like what kento was talking about like how he likes to fish it is just burning it exactly i mean the bait alone already has so much drawing power yeah you know? and it just it looks amazing i haven't seen any other bait kick the way it does how erratic it is yeah and really the only way to get that action is burning it how so, do you like to how do you like to rig it um i'll usually rig it on a pierce hook 
like a, a big pierce hook, usually like a seven or eight, or even a weighted pierce screw lock if I want to get oh, it down gotcha. a little more nice, and keep nice. it from popping up. Yeah. So the weighted one works really well too. Nice. You like running a stinger on it at all? I do run a stinger. If I'm not around a bunch of cover, I'll throw like a size three pierce brutal on there because I'm usually thrown on pretty heavy line. Yeah. So I want that little bit thicker gauge treble. Gotcha. And it does great. It's a dope bait. It's a lot of fun. Yeah, it's sick. I hope people try it out and fish it for themselves. Yeah. It's a ton of fun to catch them on. Yeah, it's a bait I've recently discovered and started throwing and I love it. It's so much fun. That's dope. And then moving over to trout for April, I have the 110 saltwater plus one. And so kind of the opposite of what you'd think for bass, as it's getting warmer, bass are moving shallow and the trout are moving deeper. So this is a bait that'll get down there and it sinks a little. So that helps you get it down even further, which I love. And some of these saltwater colors, if you see that, are just awesome. That's sick. It might be crazy for like a bass guy, but for a trout, that's candy. Oh yeah, they would smoke it. So this is a sweet bait as well. Obviously you guys know one tons a staple for us. Yeah. So it's just another great little bit different offering from Mega Bass. Isn't that crazy how like bass can be shooting up shallow and then trout are doing the complete opposite and they're just dipping out to deeper water? Exactly. Like it's, they're animals, dude. They're wild. It's so funny how it works, how they're just doing the opposite thing at the same time. Right. Would you Ma folks aside, throw a size 22 parachute atoms for trout? <laughs> yeah. I don't even know what that is. <laughs> it's a parachute atoms? That's why he's hired. You're yeah. speaking a different language. <laughs> We've never heard of a prana maze before. Yeah. Lucky for us, because he actually catches big trout. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, God. yeah. Fly fishermen everywhere just went. He's talking about throwing saltwater baits for trout. Yeah. <laughs> Bunch of losers. That's so funny. Yeah. Two super fun baits. Love these. That's for dope, April. Dude. Andrew. Andrew. Yeah, nice. Let's get it going. Good job, Callan. Right. How are we doing today, sir? Good man, how are you, CJ? I'm doing great. Yeah, just learning great. all these secrets here. That new mustache, dude. Oh, dude, it's man, thick. Yeah. It's my uh, chia the, pet. The 80s porn <laughs> stash. <laughs> yeah, this thing's fire. <laughs> all right, guys. April, springtime. I mean, I picked a spinner bait. Uh, obviously, I'm gonna throw a variety of baits, but a spinner bait's a great one for searching, uh, covering water. Obviously, all the baits gonna be moving shallow. Uh, you got smaller size bait fish moving in. Uh, bass are hungry. They're moving around. This is the Mega Bass V9. A little bit more of like, I would kind of call it a finessier spinner bait. It's got like pretty light wire on there and uh, the skirt's like not super, not a ton of skirt to it. Right. It's one of those spinner baits. Everybody's different with their spinner baits. For me, for this one, I'm not throwing a trailer on it. I just throw it straight out of the package how it is. Finessey look to it. It comes through cover really well. Uh, the head design on there, it's designed so it bounces off of logs and keeps the bait um, running straight, running true. I mean, you fish it deep, fish it shallow, it's spinner yeah. bait, so. I like that you went with the V9. A lot, I think a lot of people go with the SV3. Right, yeah, you know? I feel like the V9 it's... slept on. I mean, in my opinion, I like it better than the SV3, just looks-wise and performance-wise. I love the blades on it, too. Yeah, it's, it's not, it's like look. a, what are these, Indiana blades? Yeah, they're kind of like an Indiana, Indiana blade. blade. It's yeah. like a hybrid Colorado Willow. It's Which cool. is perfect for the yep. spring, because, I mean, typically you don't have, like, super clean water. Yeah. So you're getting right. that hybrid. Right. So it's yeah. not chocolate milk, but it's not like crystal clear. Exactly. So you're getting a good thump. Exactly. And then obviously you can adjust your colors to uh, whatever forage and water clarity you're fishing. Um, but yeah, spinner bait, great springtime search bait, pre-spawn, um, even going into summer. Yeah. Yeah, it's dirty. As it warms up. Switching gears, trout. <laughs> this might be a little more familiar to yeah. you. Yeah. Raid level minnow. I'm going to take it out. We've done some work on the level minnow the past year. Yes, level minnow. Sweet. Pretty much as soon as they came in, we were drawn to them. Just nice big jerk bait, gnarly hooks on there. <laughs> yeah, seriously. The color is sick. Yeah. So this is a uh, stand by. Natural this shad. This is natural shad. Um, awesome little clear bait fish presentation. So level minnow is sick for. Um, my favorite thing about it is the castability. I mean, the weight transfer system they have there, it's a magnetic system. I can't even get it to go, but when you really whip it with your rod, you can actually hear it like snap as the weights transfer forward in the bait, and these things launch. I mean, you can cast these further than any other jerk bait this size that, that I've used. Um, and then the action, of course, is great. I mean, you can fish it with pulls, jerks, hard taps. Mm -hmm. um, you can just straight reel it. Yeah. There's no really wrong way to fish this bait. And uh, April, you got the ice coming off the lakes. The trout are going to be shallow. 
something like this where you can make a long cast down a flat or something like that and just keep it moving. Long, long cast, slow retrieve, just on the pause usually. Yeah, I like that the level minnows are pretty forgiving too. Like with a 110, sometimes you got to twitch it just right to get the ideal action out of it. Right, the you level can't minnow, really mess this thing up. Like right. pretty much any way you hit your rod, it's gonna like react in a good way and look natural. It has a lot of roll to it too. Mm -hmm. And obviously the hardware that, that comes on these guys is straight out of the package, ready to go. Really yeah, strong sticky. hooks. Yeah, super sharp. For and anybody watching, do you have a simple way to choose a level minnow over a 110 or a 110 over a level minnow like how does the level yeah. minnow fall into like mm -hmm. i know you're a huge 110 fan yeah yeah how i love do you the 110 determine when it's time to throw the level minnow over the 110 right so i that's one of those things where you're kind of just gonna have to feel it out because they're both amazing baits they both do different things i wouldn't say one does one thing better than the other other than the level minnow if you need that extra 20 30 yards on your cast It'll give, you, it'll give you that. Um, Color-wise, I would say you have more options with the 110, but Raid has been giving us some awesome colors recently. So I wouldn't say it's like I'm going to pick one so over the other. You're just mixing it in. Yeah. It's just a gut thing where yeah. sometimes yeah. you're like, you know what, I'm going to try this right yeah. now. And, okay. Yeah, obviously a level minnow is a little bit bigger. So, I mean, if you're going to want to upsize, then that's one of those baits that you'd for sure try. But, yeah, I mean, the last couple months, this has been a killer for us. We've loved using it. Um, Pretty much everything. Yeah. Too. Like you guys have been yeah. tracking trout, you've been catching small Yeah, mouth, I've caught, yeah. Yeah, I've been using it for bass and trout. Yeah. Um, it just gets bit. It's just one of those baits. I know uh, someone said it, you told me it was the same guy who designed the 110, actually designed the level minnow. So there's that. I mean, obviously that guy knows what he's doing. Yeah. <laughs> Shoot, I caught <laughs> one. Yeah. Something. yeah. yeah. Just something. a little bit. Yeah. He, that he whole, might know a thing or two. The wall to your right over there might mean something. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's pretty established, but yeah, raid level minnow. I mean, Callan kind of covered what, what the basics are for jerkbait fishing this spring for trout. Just, it's a jerkbait. I mean, we've been doing it for months. Everybody's yeah. been throwing jerk baits, so. Shoot, I even caught one last time we were yeah. up north just trolling it. Oh yeah, <laughs> like they just chew if it. you haven't tried the level minnow, give it a try. I mean, it comes in a little cheaper than a 110 too, so that's always a plus. Yeah. Plus you do not have to switch those hooks. If you're a guy that switches your Katsu out barb hooks, Good to go. So yeah, great level man. Sweet. Thanks for sharing. So CJ, people give Griff a lot of credit for being like the guy of fun. And look, he is. He's he throws guy. some stupid things, right? <laughs> yeah. But the reality is in this shop, everything has to pass through Louise mm -hmm. before anybody actually believes it, right? Yeah. Yeah. So anything that Griff is taking credit for has started with Louise, <laughs> right? Secrets out. <laughs> yeah. So Let's see what he has to say. Let's do it. What's up, guys? What's up? The founder himself. So, the founder of fun. The founder of fun. Woo -woo. I like guys, it. Come on. <laughs> uh, all right. So when I'm trying to cover water and like I'm a little more practical uh, bait. I'm going to go with like the dunk here. Um, in particular, the power dunk, just a little bit bigger. Uh, gets down there a little bit deeper. I think it gets bound to about 12 feet on eight pound test. So as I said, you know, I'm trying to cover water. I'm trying to go around like sticks or trees or whatever. And then if I'm trying to go into the cover, I'm gonna go with the scooper frog. This guy here, the Magnum. Oh, the Magnum too. Mm, big Dang, boy. going with the big one, I like it. And how I run that guy is uh, with a six lot uh, bellows or infinity. And then you have your choice of, um, depending how you wanna run it, you can hang it on the line with the hanger glide there. Gotcha. Or if you're more straight to it, you can just put it right on that split ring, which I like this teardrop one, just keeps kind of everything on one side there when you're working it. And then uh, I like the five gram, little tungsten on there. And uh, what that does is uh, you could kind of work it um, on this top of the surface, as well as um, if you want to keep it a little more stealthy, you know, you can let it fall in. Uh, have it not be breaking the surface and making that commotion. So, I mean, at the end of the day, you could really just use it like a soft plastic, too. Just, gotcha. Pretty you know, weedless, too. Yeah. Right? So you basically have the bait with the hook inside of it connected to a split, a split ring or the hanger, and then from that, the weight's hanging down in front of it. So mm -hmm. you can kind of work it, yeah, I guess really how you would need to. That's yeah. pretty cool. So one nice thing, too, is like, like I said, you know, you work on the top, just below. 
uh, you can work it like slower or uh, you can pretty much straight retrieve it with these like kind of like a grub appendage yeah um, mm -hmm. so like on that straight retrieve they get just a little bit of a kick on there and uh, that's something I'm like a real big fan of is a uh, frog that you can work more than one way. So. You think like when the fish are looking at it, like it's scooping across the top of the surface, you think they think it's maybe like a bluegill or shad too? So or are you going strictly for like a frog presentation? Um, I think with this one, like probably like more so a frog just because it's got like, you know, basically looks just like a frog. So right, I mean, like, it's scooper frog, right? Closest <laughs> thing to a frog I, I could think of like that, you know, as far as a plastic frog goes you know, right so. yeah absolutely i mean it's, there's probably not a better bait out there that looks just like a frog especially when it's swimming yeah so when you're twitching it so you're like casting it out there and you're just kind of putting the rod down and just twitching it down yeah basically. i mean typically like you would like a, a regular frog you're not trying to necessarily walk it but mm -hmm. you know just uh have something to have it break that surface gotcha and then um just you know uh, depending on how they're wanting it you know so if you need to keep it up there you know moving a little bit faster so it's just keeping that um, water breaking that's cool um, or you know you need to drop it down a little bit or just even get it into right a little right. more more into the cover then you just let it fall into it which it's got a nice little like a, it's kind of like a good vertical slow little fall. yeah so you can basically like burn it on the top to where you need to get it to like a stick or something like that and then mm -hmm. soak it by that stick so oh, that's yeah. cool I like that cool. cover a bunch of water with that yeah that's pretty much you know so something between the two of those is what I'm gonna go with it. either covering water or just Trying to keep it fun with the top water, can't beat that, so. Right, of course, I mean, best way to catch a fish. Sweet. I know. Ben, what do you have to say about scooper frog? You're a scooper frog professional like Luis? <clears throat> well, obviously not like Luis. The scooper frog, I think, is one of those super under the radar things that when it first came out, everybody pretty much just assumed it was a top water bait, right? But all the application, like in Japan, I mean, certainly you can throw it like a top water bait, but the way they just destroy them in Japan is how Louise is talking about. Sounds you like know. a fun time. Yeah, so fishing huh. on a jig trailer, fishing on a wobble head, like that's the way it really became yeah. like a huge thing. You know, uh, on a Jika, on a free rig, like there's a million different things you can do with it. But I think the biggest thing is, and Louise adapts to that really well, is don't let something tell you it's, it's only one dimensional. Right. Right, like it's designed as a topwater frog but use it for whatever you want to use it for. Try it, like play with it, have some fun. And every once in a while you discover something that was totally unintended. Right. I mean, how many times over the last couple of years have we talked about that? From rods to baits. Yeah. Right? I mean, my favorite rods were not intended for what they were used <laughs> for, right? Okay. Here we're talking about a bait that is great for what it is intended for, but it also has this whole other application mm -hmm. that doesn't make sense to a lot of people. And so you try and get bit and you're like, oh shit. Like that makes perfect sense, yeah. right? So yeah. it's easy to get pigeonholed into like one idea of something. Yeah. When you could fish that, you know, same rod, bait, whatever it is, and find a more efficient way to catch fish. If you're it. gonna play. If you're gonna right? play. Right. If yeah, you're absolutely. gonna play, if you're gonna try, if you're gonna experiment and do some stupid things, right? If you yeah. wanna be more like Louise and Griff <laughs> and like experimental, right? This is the time of the year to do it. Absolutely. So this is the time of the year where the fish are more open to let's say crazier things, right? Things that maybe don't make sense. When it gets just super hard and super locked down, that's when it's kind of hard to experiment because if you don't get bit, you give up on it, right? Yeah. Right. So mm -hmm. now's the time to try some things out and see if it works so that when it gets hard, you have a couple extra tricks in your pocket that yep. nobody else is using. Dude, I can't imagine a lot of people here in the States are throwing that kind of rig. You know? Of course not. Even after hearing about it, we could say it's the greatest thing ever. They're not going to throw it because right. it doesn't make sense. It's a frog. Yep. Why are you putting a frog in a weight and putting it on the <laughs> bottom? It doesn't make any sense. But these are the types of things that sometimes just, you know, can really make a difference in getting a bite, not getting a bite, having success, not having success. Yep. Or, you know, having fun. Yeah. Right? I mean, it's crazy. When you get bit on that thing, it's like, dude, I just caught a fish on a frog on the bottom. Yep. Like yeah. when, is, when, is, that? when does that ever happen, right? <laughs> that's the glory of April right there. That's it. That's it. So, uh, guys, on behalf of myself and Louise and Andrew and Callan and CJ and everybody here at the Hookup Tackle, guys, thank you for giving us time. Thank you for humoring us in our nonsense uh, on these videos. I hope this is enjoyable and maybe shed some light on a new product that you might be able to add to your arsenal. So if you have questions on anything that we covered, 
Drop it down below and one of us will get an answer to you. CJ will leave links to all the products if you guys want to check them out closer. And of course, uh, once again, on behalf of myself, everybody here, thank you guys. Thank you for the business. Thank you for the support. And we'll see you again very soon. Enjoy warm April. Hallelujah. Peace out, my friends. See ya.